I wouldn't dream of asking you to put your hand up in here. I think I will have a heart attack if the two people who did it did that. Perhaps now is your chance. Will you sit down, please? I'm starting from the assumption that everybody in here, A, has had an opportunity to, and I hope in nearly all cases has taken the opportunity to, read the notice that I put on the board yesterday about discipline in the school library. If you did read it, you remember what it was about, and if you didn't, it's quite short. What it said was, discipline in the school library. I understand that members of the school have been messing about with the card index in the school library and also transferring books to the wrong shelves. It's obviously crazy to upset the efficiency of the library, which is the key asset for all A and O level work. If anyone is discovered doing anything like this again, there will be a massive inquiry and those guilty can expect a massive punishment as well. Now before I come to the sequel that has caused me to call this assembly, I would like to attract your attention to the rationale, the common sense of that notion. I admit that I'm furious now, and I don't often get as furious as I am with you, and I really am furious with you now, with the people who've done what's coming in the moment. Because I go back to my point, any headmaster on the brink of A and O, who allowed some joker to turn the card index upside down and muck about with the books, and didn't do something about it, would be grossly negligent. Absolutely gross, weak, and feeble, and unfit to be a headmaster because these exams are so unimportant for you. But far from having any sort of punishment at that stage, I could quite easily, yesterday, have had an assembly and had a huge hole for Rouge and a punishment for that. But I didn't do that because my method with you is almost always the same. I give you one warning, pretty nearly. I say, don't cut chapel, and then you do, and you get it in the neck. Don't drink whatever you do drink, and then you do it, and you get it in the neck. And don't do that, and you'll get the sack, and you get the sack. Well, I put that notice up, and there it is. Common sense. And when I got back just now from the governor's meeting, I met by the second master to find that there are two obscene graffiti in the library, one of which has most certainly been done since yesterday, since yesterday, definitely since yesterday, and the other one in the last 48 hours, definitely, and probably since yesterday. One involves someone who left a large piece of blotting paper right out with a filthy word about um, a senior member of the school. And the other one was a filthy comment about one of the masters on the intercom, you know, those desks at the bottom of the where you work. There. Now that, A, I can't bear graffiti. And the last time we had any graffiti at all, it occurred, I remember, in the lavatory in Fort George. The net result of that was that I locked the entire school up for 48 hours and the whole lot missed their weekend and 80 parents had to drive home without their children. That was the last time. And I'm in that mood now. Now, the reason that I'm not going to take away the weekend totally tomorrow is because it's confirmation. And one has to keep a proportion. Some things are more important than others. And confirmation is more important even than local discipline. Therefore, out of, uh, in, out of respect for the confirmation candidates and in courtesy to your parents, many of whom may be coming to take you out for all I know for the weekend, I don't feel that I can fairly do the same as I did before, though I'd dearly like to. What I am saying is this, that unless the two people who did that are in my study in double quick time to tell me that they've done it, then the whole school will be back by housing. You'll we'll be in your house areas by 6 p.m. on Sunday for a road call to check you're there. If you're not there, you've had it. And if you are there, you'll come by housing in here for another school assembly to find out how many punishments are coming. And the first two that are coming, the library's not opening again anyway until that boy does it. Now, all those two ones And secondly, as the whole school will be gated for the whole of the rest of town from 6 p.m. on Sunday anyway, to start with. Plus anything else that's crossed my mind between then and now, it's getting steadily worse. And if you say why, 
get so steamed up. Are you not overreacting? I certainly am not overreacting. Because the original, the original thing that started this was entirely reasonable. You can't expect me to be understanding and tolerant and all the marginals to be, and to work as hard as we do. When we are only trying to educate you and help you to get these exams, if you're going to behave like that, and when having done the first loss and been let off with a perfectly reasonable note, you do that, then that is too much. And the final charge is, in this, this in case you don't know some of the younger ones among you, I've been a schoolmaster 30 years and I don't like boys who don't do what I tell you. And it's damned into absolutely disgraceful disobedience to the headmaster, which I will not have. Under any circumstances, and no, but no responsible headmaster would, having put that up, to tolerate two disgusting graffiti, and I hate them anyway, in the life. So, there you are. That's the deal. I want those two boys to be brave enough to get to my study pretty fast. And if they, if they do get to my study, I will see to it that there's a notice on my board tonight saying the matter is closed. You see in my handwriting a notice on the board, my notice board tonight, saying the matter is closed. Well, so it is. You don't see a notice in my handwriting on that board tonight saying the matter is closed. So it isn't. You make sure you're back in your houses for a roll call at 6 p.m. on Sunday and get in here fairly quick to hear what the worst is going to be, and it's going to be very nasty indeed. It takes a lot to make these crosses, this, and those two boys have done it. So I suggest that they're courageous enough to own up and not punish 504 other innocent people on the eve of confirmation. And if a confirmation candidate has done it, I can hardly see how he can possibly go forward to confirmation in the knowledge that he is at the same breath as turning up in front of the bishop punishing 504 innocent people. That's all I wish to say, and I want to see those boys jolly fast. Four or six o'clock on Sunday, the lot of them.